Connor Schellenberger, the precocious freshman who's come of age, looking to keep Virginia on top. Maryland is Jared Bernhardt, a player for all time, can bookend his career with another national title. Concrete is more than a solid substance. It's also a symbol of strength and endurance. A building block for foundations that last, allowing legacies to grow. Look at these teams. Consider their pedigree. The programs they represent. Their history is here, built on a bedrock of pride. They live up to winning traditions, reach the game's highest ground yet again. Through unity of purpose, effort and skill, and motivation that comes from the deepest well. Love for their teammates, their school, and the game. Feeding the crease, all terrapins. In a stadium that stands on concrete, like the cornerstones of their success. The reigning champs, hang on! These teams will compete for the NCAA Men's Lacrosse National Championship. Welcome to Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. It's the National Championship in Division I Men's Lacrosse. Reigning champ Virginia tries to keep the crown in Charlottesville. Maryland eyes perfection and the first undefeated season in 15 years. In the semifinals, Virginia knocked off North Carolina. Maryland obliterated Duke, the preseason favorite when the year began. And we say good afternoon. Anish Shroff alongside former national champion Quint Kesnick, the barber of Seville, Paul Carcaterra down on the sidelines. Divergent paths for these teams. UVA had to navigate the gauntlet of the ACC, the toughest league we've ever seen. Maryland, through no fault of its own, played a conference-only schedule, but their path to a championship as arduous as we've seen. The bigger picture here also is you got two foundational programs, the 50th year of this NCAA tournament, a season like no other. Uncertainty, teams had to use common sense, discipline, just an amazing season. Today, the finish line is in sight, and that's cause for celebration. Maryland won it all in 2017. Virginia won it all in 2019. And Kark, when they did, the guy who's their star right now was still in high school. That indeed, Anish. And Virginia is led by a prodigy freshman who is as polished and technically sound as it gets. Connor Schellenberger in the quarterfinal round against Georgetown had six goals. On Saturday in the semis against UNC, he was a dealer with two goals and four assists. His look away feeds deceive defenders and teammates cash in. He has tremendous feel, and he can find lanes in the defense with sick through passes. Who would not want to play with number one in blue? And play Schellenberger as a passer, it is hammer time. Virginia's leading scorer is a three-tool player, an initiator, a passer, and a shooter. His teammates say he plays like a senior, and he has been sensational with at least five points in every NCAA tournament game so far. Jared Bernhardt, the senior for Maryland, Quint, arguably the best to ever wear the Terrapin Red. An elite high school option quarterback out of Orlando, the ability to read and react, whether it's drawing a double team, eyes up using his vision, he's got that perceptual expertise. Straight line speed like we haven't seen. I mean, he can accelerate. He is super fast. And then the ability off ball, that is to recognize the pattern of the offense, the views of the defense, the ability to catch in space and capitalize. Be the best? Well, he is the best. Bernhardt has been unstoppable in this tournament. 16 goals through the first three games. In honor of Memorial Day, we now send it to our public address announcer, Jared Doyon. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pratt & Whitney Stadium for today's Division I Men's Lacrosse National Championship between the Virginia Cavaliers and the Maryland Terrapins. As we celebrate Memorial Day, please rise and remove your hats to honor America and to those who support our freedom at home and abroad. Today, the colors are presented by Connecticut Army National Guard, 6th Recruiting and Retention Battalion. And now, please join Sergeant Major Frank May from the United States Army as he leads us in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star Tiffany, the head coach at Virginia, led the Cavaliers to a national title in 2019. He carries with him a wooden stick that's become a talisman of sorts. The last gift from his late father. And Quince, two years ago, he was inseparable from that stick during that postseason run. That stick is the symbol of the roots of this Native American game. It's the medicine game to promote health and strength. Coach running around playing catch, relieving some of the pregame tension. John Tillman on the other sideline for Maryland, now in his 11th season. Six times he's now been in this game. Lost in 2011, 12, 15, and 16 before breaking through in 2017. A relationships-based coach who has built a rock-solid culture. He's all about the details of the scheme. This team delivers effort, and they've got tons of talent. Ten years ago, it was Maryland and Virginia in the national championship game. Virginia won two years ago when Virginia won the title. They beat Maryland in Long Island in the quarterfinals. They are shaking too. Good, huh? Yeah, they're fist bumping. All right, gentlemen, afternoon, Dave Pizziaro, Mark McGinnis, Gus Blaisdell, Tim McCaffrey. We're your officials. You guys play hard today. We're going to work even harder for you. Goalie, stop! Go get them, man. All right, Timmy. Okay. Do a bust. A game rooted in connectivity. We're still waiting, Dave. All right, make sure you guys show me the tape. Every time going down. It begins mano a mano. All right, fellas, here we go. Down together. Do it right. Quick. Justin Shockey for Maryland, Petey LaSalle for Virginia, and the Cavaliers control the opening faceoff. Go, 
Virginia waits for its offensive personnel. Doc Sake in six and blue. Playing his final collegiate game. Highest scoring midfielder in school history. Here comes Jeff Connor down the alley. Now Matt Moore. His shoulder still sore after getting banged up in the semifinal. Trying to maneuver through this Maryland labyrinth. Terps come out in zone. Now man to man defense. Moore plays it back. Ian Laviano's shot is on. It's a man to man scheme. The reason it needs to look like a zone is they were so packed in. They're really not getting out on the perimeter and pressing these Virginia Dodgers. Peyton Formier in his shades against Roman Puglisi. Connor, saved by Logan McNamee, who had 17 in the semis. The outlet to Geppert. And Maryland able to clear before Virginia could even set up that Valkyrian ride. So now the Terps on offense, and they can be ruthlessly surgical in the six-on-six six with the movement and passing. Kyle Long rushes down to X. Anthony DeMeo. He had four goals in the quarters against Virginia last year. And the first touch for Bernhardt. Marked by Cade Sostick. Doubled early that time. A chance here for Maryland. Bubba Fairman. Absorbing the contact is saved by Alex Road. A rebound by Bernhardt turned away again. The six foot seven Cole Kastner's got it. But a loose ball push against Virginia. We get a shot clock reset. Alex Road in goal for Virginia and Q. He has saved his best in these big games, better than 60% in his last five NCAA tournament games. MVP of the 2019 NCAA tournament. He, this kid has broken out of his shell off the field. He's continued to develop on it. Bernhardt got top side as he does with so much ease, but the shot well offline. Virginia's got the backup. And any shot that goes out of bounds, closest to the ball when it goes out, awarded possession. Bertrand, two-time Division II Player of the Year at Merrimack, 41 in blue. Logan McNaney, the sophomore out of Corning, New York, the glass town. In goal for Maryland, 17 saves in that semifinal win against Duke. Spoke to his mother, Kim, two nights ago. Everyone thinks goalies are crazy. She wanted me to know and everyone to know. Logan is normal. He's a normal goalie. We had to apologize to her because our point of reference tells us otherwise. Starting early, I see. Getting physical. Matt Moore turned away. There's Bertrand. Has the matchup with Bubba Fairman. Maryland is comfortable with Fairman playing defense. Looking to feed the crease. Xander Dixon shot, not there. Meany able to clamp down. So far, defense is the main storyline today. Turks packing and in, impacting shots. And now Maryland has Dixon caught on defense for Virginia. Clark, it's been a rainy weekend. Field conditions are what? Props to the grounds crew here. It rained all weekend long. I thought by Monday, the crease area and the face-off dot would be absolute mess, right? It is dry, an unbelievable thick grass surface that's held up extremely well. Sawstead with good defense on Bernhardt. Bernhardt gets it back. Bernhardt left his shot, not much on it. Virginia defending number one well here in the early minutes. That was John Fox, the captain, strong at the point of attack. 
This is Peel. Looked out of an ambush. Shoots it wide. Virginia the backup. Jack Peel. Senior McLean, Virginia. Seeing both teams right now defensively. Quick sliding defensive schemes here. You look at this offense with Doc Aiken and Connor Schellenberger and Matt Moore. Heavy dodge oriented offense. The Turks packing it in. Quick support and help. And we'll see how quick they're sliding to Bernhardt on the other end. Doc Aiken gives it up to Matt Moore. Two years ago, we offered the win 30 goal, 30 assist season in Virginia story history. They get a first penalty flag. Here comes Moore, shoots high, and Virginia will go now. These early possessions, both staffs have plans, obviously, but they're probing matchups. Who's got an advantage? Well, it's on White, number eight, 30 second technical hey. interference. Hey. Well Virginia goes to the pick game behind the net. You see the pick set and watch eight in White. Roman Puglisi, Puglisi just decked the picker. Pick rules in lacrosse very similar to basketball. Virginia without an extra man goal in this NCAA tournament. 0 for 5. Forward corner where he's been a big threat with the man up. He's coming down near the crease. We get another flag. Ian Laviano has his shot saved. And another penalty coming on Maryland. Calling it tight. Another one. You got to make that adjustment now if you're a player. White, 43, 30 second technical interference. That is Brett Maycar out of Yorktown, New York. You're not allowed to check a player in front of the crease, right in the slot area, who doesn't have the ball. And not only did Maycar check the Virginia offensive player, but he took the stick out of his hands. An easy call for these officials. Both teams are combined 0 for 11 shooting. Now Schellenberger. Giving him the outside shot. It was six on four for a few moments, now six on five. Moore's pass knocked down by Geppert. Geppert able to scoop it up. Moore chasing him. Here comes John Geppert. All the way, a bouncer too high. Going hard to back up. Who controls the middle of the field could prove vital today. Clark Geppert's a weapon in transition. He's a former midfielder who picked up the long pole and transitions to that long stick midfield position. He's a junior out of Washington, D.C. He can run the field. Yeah, and he needs to run the field because Virginia can answer now. The guys like Grayson Soliday, those are question marks for the Cavaliers earlier in the season. Now they're becoming answers. Here's Kyle Long, a dangerous passer as a midfielder. Plays it behind. Daniel Moltz! The first goal of this NCAA championship. This is a big deal for Maryland. Six offensive players. There's one guy who primarily plays in the inside. Everyone else is interchangeable. That guy is Daniel Mokes, 37 in white. This time he plays the perimeter. Starts with Kyle Long, who's an exceptional dodger. He got Bernhardt behind Long up top. They put Maltz in space against a short stick, and he takes advantage and feasts. That's a situation with a defender, Grayson Soliday. He's covering Maltz. He's got to make a decision to either go in front of the goal or cut through the back. He just takes a poor angle, and it gives Maltz a little bit of a head start. The defender's allowed in the crease. Maltz isn't, but you've got to cut those angles if you're Soliday. Petey LaSala wins the faceoff. Over to Matt Moore, a rocket! And Matt Moore gets Virginia even at one. Petey LaSala points off the faceoff. It's not just that he wins possessions, he can generate offense.
Tay, this guy takes it out the front side. He's off to the races. He's a terrific athlete. I think he's got to dominate this game for Virginia to win. I think he's got to be about plus eight in the faceoff department. Moore absolutely slings it. That is good news for the Cavaliers because even in warm-ups, he was favoring that left shoulder. He smokes that right. For his career, 100 goals and 100 assists. One of five Cavaliers to accomplish that feat. Chalky punches this up ahead. No push for Maryland. Logan Wisnowskis. He has been Jared Bernhardt's main man. A soft-spoken senior. He began his career at Syracuse. Webb shirted there, then transferred to Maryland, and has gotten better every year. Kyle Long again, streaking toward the cage. And Long with a hand in Maryland's first two goals. We spoke to him yesterday. He told us he remembers that quarterfinal in 2019. Quint, you talk about Bernhard's speed. How about Kyle Long's? He's got the Jets cue. He's a catalyst for these Terps. He comes off the bench and gets things Done so many times this season. It's Kyle Long from Springfield, Pennsylvania. No double, he makes him pay. Virginia found its identity in the quarterfinal. It was physicality. It was a team that said, we're not afraid to be the bully. It was Jurassic Park. And on the offensive end, Connor Schellenberger, six goals. For Maryland, they travel out to Notre Dame against the best six seed maybe in tournament history. Doesn't matter. Anthony DeMeo had the answer in overtime. And then for the Cavaliers, semifinal action. He had six goals in the corners. Connor Schellenberger was amazing in the semis with two goals and four assists. But the defense, they buckled down, gents. Virginia held off North Carolina 12-11. Maryland taking on Duke, the Blue Devils, the preseason favorite, Michael Sowers, Brennan O'Neill. None of that mattered. This was over shortly after it started. Thoroughly dominant in that semifinal win under John Tillman. Their former defense defenseman, John Tillman played at Cornell. Lars Tiffany played at Brown University. Tillman's uh, first championship experience, I think, was as an assistant back in 2004 for Navy. Good. Osala wins it forward for Virginia. Two of the cage. He shoots and scores. Didi Osala, an assist and a goal for Virginia. Not to get bogged down with the advanced statistics. But our friends at Max Reference came up with a statistic for expected goals added. Osala is number one in the country. Dealing with the pressure, the point man, 43 in white, Brett Maycar is a little slow on the scene. We've seen Petey do this all season long. He's a bowling ball running downhill. You must respect 23 in blue. He was an offensive midfielder in high school. He's so comfortable in the middle of the field. He's played both ends his whole life. If you remember in 2019, statistically, T.D. Erlin from Yale, he got the best of them. But Lasala with those two second half goals right off the face. Yes. Those are complete juice goals. And Lars Tiffany recruited Peter Lasala. He could not get a hotel. So he slept in his car to watch Lasala play. He calls it one of his better decisions. When Petey wins draws, it's usually out the front, uh, which has which got great rewards associated with winning those faceoffs because they get transition opportunities. So not all face-off wins are created equal. Eric Molliver, the freshman from Atlanta, part of the second midfield now for Maryland. Includes a couple of transfers. Eric Holden, who's got the ball, and Griffin Brown. Holden from Hobart, Brown from Colgate. Wisnowskis out from behind. Now a 
Alex Rode had hopped out of the cage, now back in there. Brown, who's had a big postseason, that one hits the pipe. Looks like Virginia's slow to double team, forcing Maryland to beat him unassisted. Man, that was a good look. Rode caught a break. Virginia has to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60. Any second shot clock initiates on change of possession. 20 seconds to get it over midfield, and you can go over in the back, but only in the first 20 seconds. A couple of MLB games coming on ESPN later today. Red Sox, Astros at four. Pirates, Royals follow at eight. Taken. You spent the fall at Villanova hoping to play football for the Wildcats. Did not have a season. He came back to Virginia in the spring. An ankle issue earlier in the season. Has scored so many clutch goals in his career for UVA. Good matchup for Schellenberger. He's got the short stick coffee. Schellenberger gets free. McMooney denies the angle. Should have taken an extra step there. He had the separation. There was no double team. Schellenberger could have canned that. There's Maltz. Now Bernhardt has his man hung up. Feeding the cutting Kaufman. 3-2 Maryland. It's a game of millimeters. When you're a goaltender, you're always looking for perfection. You're living on that edge between failure and success. A game of millimeters. Doink off the post. At the other end, McNaney stands tall. The lefty shuts the door. And Maryland scores in early offense. Joshua Kaufman, one of the three short stick defenders for the Terps, who feel comfortable in transition shooting the ball. Alex Smith. Roman Puglisi, these are guys that can make plays and they're not in a rush to get off the field to have those offensive middies relieve them because they can handle the rock. I'll tell you, McNaney looks poised from up here, Paul, and a clean save is a dangerous outlet. He'll punish you when Down. he can catch that ball. Yeah, Straighten he's so up. calm, Straighten up. relaxed. He is a second-year player, obviously hasn't played in a tournament with the season being cut short in 2020 in COVID, but when I spoke to his Mom, Kim, he said, such a relaxed kid and easygoing. It's been an absolute joy to raise him. In the summertime, they actually work together, too. They work at a mobile pizza truck, making pies upstate New York and corning and eating pizza. You would want to do that. If you had five minutes in the first quarter for the first food reference, you win. Garno, Ian Labiano. Labiano, one of four Cavaliers with 100 plus career goals. The matchup here for Schellenberger against Roman Puglisi, who spins him around. It's good defense by Puglisi. Back more with a bouncer, McNaney's there. Both of Virginia's goals came unsettled off of faceoffs. There's Maycar. Moore trailing them. And McNaney's outlets have been on point. Virginia hasn't even had a chance to ride. Sharp in between the pipes is McNaney. And you got to file that away if you're Virginia and focus on shot selection. I'll tell you one thing the Cavs are doing well, moving off ball, creating some matchups for Schellenberger. Here's Wisnowskis, nicknamed Groot. Does not say a whole lot. Long the goal and an assist, and now Bernhardt from up top against the short stick Merle. They get it back to Bernhardt. Swift as a shadow. Bernhardt feeds Wisnowskis. Back shot to score. Ripson. So much attention when one in white has the ball. 
Virginia knows it's red alert, it's double time. Who's supporting this matchup? Well, he's flanked by some pretty good goal scorers. You see the adjacent slide by Kologi leaves Logan Musnaskis in his comfort zone. This is his money spot. This team shoots 40% for a reason. Bernhardt draws all sorts of double teams. They have the ability to move and make the extra pass, and guys nail their mid-range shots. Straight now. Osala wins it forward. That's when Virginia's been dangerous today. He flips it back to Schellenberger. Six on six, Quint, what does Virginia have to do better? Still looking for answers in the six on six, as you said, two face-off goals. They've gotten some matchups with Schellenberger. He's able, been able to move and generate switches. But from, from those scenarios, Maryland has held tough inside. Jeff Connor now, a former top five recruit. Down the alley. Back to action, Matt Moore. Laviano, no angle. Geppert defended him well. Aiken gets the pick. Maryland doing a good job off those double teams of covering up. Here comes Connor. But Lacey sends him back to the end line. Connor will dodge on Puglisi again. How about the defense by Roman Puglisi, one of the best short stick defensive midfielders in the country? He's a rock. Jeff Connor. And that one slipped in. Eventually, he gets an edge on Puglisi, but not much from a severe angle. Although he's tight to the net, Paul. He's about seven yards. And watch this ricochet off the goaltender. You know, Quint, a lot of midfielders, when they're going down the alley, want their stick to their outside their left hand, but Connor knows by keeping his angle and is keeping his feet upfield and bringing that stick back to his right, it increases his angle, so outstanding awareness. Breakout year for Connor this season, who's always been known for his textbook fundamentals. A non-factor early in the season and then emerged after the first four or five games. Here's Jared Connors. The midfielder of the year as a long stick, and he has a trail checked away. Virginia now in its ride. McVaney, as we said, a dangerous outlet passer. McVaney has to get it across midfield before that clock hits 60. Maycar shovels it forward, and there's the Virginia ride with the turnover. Schellenberger the other way to Moore. Thought about it. Back to Schellenberger. Step down. Mistral. Laviano's worth his weight in gold. The 10 man ride. The process version of the full court press. Alex Rode, the goalie, comes out of the net and they roll up field. It's man to man all over the field. And look at Laviano, three and blue, go to work. Gets the ball on the carpet. Maycar panics. Ball comes up, Cavs, they're off to the races. Moore knows he's got the best shooter on the team. Connor Schellenberger. Plants his feet. Shell you later. Eight goals in this game by eight different players. We're tied at four. And the two themes that emerge if you're Virginia, face-off goals, transition goals off the ride. It looks like Maryland has the advantage in settled sets in this game. Yeah, that's the game. Virginia loves chaos. They always have. This becomes a six-on-six -six game. The advantage tilts to Maryland. Remember when we talked to Coach Tiffany early in the season, I think it was late February, one of the first things he said is, we're looking for ways to disrupt. Lars Tiffany, fascinating head coach. There's a contrarian side to him. When the world is going left, he'll go right. 
He's always tinkering, and he's admitted sometimes too much, but always finding that next day, that next market inefficiency, if you will. So they create disruption with the ride. Virginia can hold for a final possession. 25 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Tied at four. Charlie Bertrand coming around X. Saved by McNaney. Ten seconds to go. Gepard's pass out of bounds. 2.7 seconds to go. Virginia ball. Fire this for the net. Garno puts it on cage. Picked off by Puglisi. Quarter number one of this 2021 National Championship comes to an end. Maryland seeking the first undefeated season since 2006. Virginia looking to stay on top of the college lacrosse world. A stalemate after 15 minutes. Virginia, Maryland nodded at four apiece as we head to the second quarter. Chris Cotter and Paul Carcaterra down here on the field. Park, it seemed like in that first quarter, both teams were playing their games. Well, look, chaos favors Virginia. Petey LaSalle at the X. He's not the guy that just wins face-offs. Offense is created off the draw. And you look at what they're doing in the ride. I mean, Virginia's relentless. I think for Maryland, calm favors them. They can be surgical. They can score 15, 16 goals by playing half field. Can they handle the pressure of Virginia's ride? That's going to be critical. Speaking of surgical, and each Q, Clark was surgical on those haircuts this week. You guys look great. Clark was the team barber. Got me, got Clint, and got Cotter. The money I saved from the haircut, I donated to one love. 44321. Text. Text haircut. Text haircut to 44321. Anisha's big cut. Tied at four as we begin quarter number two of this national championship. We got a good one. We got a good one today. You know, the heat yeah. not being a factor, temperatures in the 50s, it was cool for the semis. I think we're going to see the best from both teams today. In some years past, Anish, these teams have been damaged goods on Memorial Day. Off to a promising start. A face-off violation, though, for Virginia here to begin the second quarter. The Cavaliers still with a 7-3 edge at the face-off dot. Go back to 2011, these two teams met the finals. Temperatures on the field were around 100. Bubba Fairman, senior from Sandy, Utah. Now it's Bernhardt. In the midst of the greatest season in Terps history, Bernhardt to the cage. Will it count? It will not. He was in the crease. Bernhardt has had five goals at least in every tournament game so far. None today, but he does have two assists. Taken. Feeding inside the pit and Cormier. The Oakville Ox. school option quarterback calls his own number clearly in the crease you know if you look at Doc Aiken and the maturation of his game it's the passing he's been a lethal goal scorer his entire career top scoring midfielder in Virginia history but he knows when you have guys inside like Peyton Cormier and Maryland's gonna slide to Doc's forcing him as a passer and he answers 
that's going to be a, a staple half field pattern for Virginia the rest of the way. That high, long dodge off the corner there. You've got an exchange, which changes the matchup for Schellenberger, and you got to look inside to Cormier. So the nuanced fan, you'll see that again, is, is what I'm saying. Luke Weirman Clark has given Maryland a bit of a lift at the faceoff X. He had some clutch wins at the end of that Notre Dame game. Absolutely. And that was a, a game statistically where the Terps really suffered at the X, but he won the big ones. He won the overtime faceoff. Griffin Brown. Bernhardt shadowed by Kate Sawstead. Who nearly erased Jackson Morrill in the 2019 championship Morrill, the star for Yale. Sauced at a freshman then. Eric Molliver. He's got the 6-7 Kastner on him. Project 39, a late season revelation for Virginia. Kastner checks it loose. Thundering downfield, Cole Kastner all the way, shoots and scores! And the Virginia bench erupts! How many teams, Quint, can unearth a future first-team All-American in the late stages of the season? I'll tell you this defense, Jurassic Park, 6'7", 6'5", 6'4". Digging in, winning some matchups on the carpet. Take off and get out. They run with Jared Connors. They run through D to O. It's Connors, the National Midi of the Year. Pump fake to the point man. And Connors, the kid doesn't miss. It's unbelievable. There's only two long stick midfielders in the last decade that have been National Midfielders of the Year. Joel White from Syracuse in 2011. Jared Connors in 2021 for Virginia, and that is the exact reason he creates absolute mayhem in the middle of the field. Four unanswered by Virginia, the reigning champs with a two-goal lead. It was Jared Connors, 28, not 39. All these Virginia defensemen are 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", and the scoring run, Quint, after this Jeff Connor goal, it was Virginia capitalizing off a little chaos. I think that's part of the appeal of, of this great sport of lacrosse. They use the ride, the full court press, cause the turnover, and then they run in transition. Docks finds Cormier inside with the bread and butter of the Cavaliers. Hit him in transition. Maryland is so good at six on six. They're a well-oiled machine. When you have an opportunity in the middle of the field, you capitalize. And to clarify, the goal was Connors, the 20th of his career. Senior captain. Yep. Stay and down. The game changing Set. long stick midi. White. Face off violation on Maryland. Both teams now with one apiece. You get three and a half, the opposition goes man up for 30 seconds. Petey LaSalle continues to be a big storyline. He's got the ball now. He's got Weirman behind the cage. Let's see if LaSalle stays on. Weirman has to make a decision. Does he sit inside and let Lasala run off and sub, or, or does he hang out on the fringes here? Aglisi all over Aiken. Moore couldn't pick it up off the bounce, rolling to the end line. And we're going to get a push against Aiken, this ball push. So Maryland ball, and the Terps catch a break. McNeeny's done great work in the tournament park, running from his crease and making plays on loose balls. Bernhardt looking on Sawston. Bernhardt reverses field. This man hung up, rode out of the cage. Bernhardt turning the corner. And Sawstead prevents top side with that 6-5 frame. 
football player in high school out of Texas. Ball movement and people movement. Signatures of this Maryland offense. Long working on Connors. Anthony DeMeo, he had the game winner in overtime to beat Notre Dame. Tony Time, the clutch goals that he's accounted for in his career. So let's take matchup for Wisnowskis. We'll attack Mo. Big size advantage for Wisnowskis. He's a lefty, gets that left hand free, missed the mark. Biggest area of improvement for Virginia's defense this year, the play of their short stick defensive midfielder. They played their best game collectively as Bernhardt misfires. They played their best game collectively in the semis against North Carolina. Grayson Soliday especially. Merle, Soliday, John Fox, 34 in blue. Shot clock expires. Virginia's defense has evolved and improved as this season has worn on. We mentioned getting Kastner into the mix. We talked about the short sticks. Sawstead getting healthy. NCAA postseason coverage continues in Oklahoma City. It's the Women's College World Series. It all begins Thursday, June 3rd, at noon Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on all the NCAA championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Schellenberger, his second. Wow, he is mobbed by his teammates. That's reps, man. Picked up a stick when he was one years old. Father Scott fueled his passion. He never played lacrosse. He was a golfer at Marshall. 200, 300 balls a day. Righty, lefty, in the backyard. Finding a field to hone his craft, and this is why. Look at the accuracy on that. That is amazing. On a lefty goalie, Quint, look where he places this. I tell you, he's putting it all together. He watches a ton of tape. He puts the time in, and that allows him to play free on game day and play an instinctual brand. We had a chance to spend a lot of time with his dad, Scott. And Down. If we talk amongst ourselves afterwards and say, who was your favorite parent of this weekend, and why was it Scott Schellenberger? I think he got, gets his hand-eye coordination from dad, who was a terrific golfer. I think he gets his speed from his mom. I think Big Shelly's got wheels. 5'11", 260, he told me he's the fastest 5'11", 260 guy in the state of Virginia. I wonder what the rest of the field looks like, though. Shelly is in our Hall of Fame. That is the dad, oh, all-timer championship weekend parent. Virginia tried the old hidden ball trick. It's Cormier right now taken. This is the long dodge that Lars Tiffany talked about. Making the shot altered by Alex Smith, part of that armada of deep hitties that Maryland rolls out. The long dodge starts up top from 20 or plus yards. Really gives the ball handler a, a, a time to see the double team evolve. More bouncer. Connor! The run continues. That's six in a row for Virginia. Turps on their heels. Tillman eyeing up the big four. What happened? It's not on the iPad. It's an effort deal right now. Maryland's a little flat-footed, Paul, standing around like Holmes. They are, and Virginia's got the sharpshooters. McNaney is a lefty. Look at the placement on the last two shots. Schellenberger hit that near pipe. And then this time, on the opposite side of the offensive zone, it's far lower pipe. Unsavable. 
Kicked out. Six. Osala and Weirman again. A big face-off win for Maryland. Bernhardt fires and scores. There is a steely cold efficiency to Jared Bernhardt's game. 20 and white Geppert. Talked about him earlier. I think he's a, a future pro player in Premier Lacrosse League. His game continues to grow. And there's Bernhardt. Mid-range excellence. He ices it. And Geppert now has two huge plays in transition for the Terps. They need 20 to be that answer. Connors for Virginia has been able to strike from end to end. The matchup between Connors and Geppert will dictate this game. 70 goals on the season for Bernhardt. He's Maryland's all-time leader in goals and points. He has set the single season record this year for goals and points. And his 17 NCAA tournament goals in this postseason tied for third all-time in a single postseason. The record, 19. Chris Cloutier did it back in 2016. He played for UNC. Step to his left, gives it up to Long. Now Bernhardt. Here comes Bernhardt. This one turned away. It'll reset the shot clock. Any shot that goes in, hits the goalie, or hits the pipe, will reset the shot clock. Long lost his man, can't finish. Another shot clock reset, possession to Maryland. Virginia. 14 to go first half. Virginia needs a timeout. Defense getting tired. Multiple resets. Lars Tiffany steps out to get his defense a breather. During the pandemic, our man Anish Shroff went from having a nice head of hair to having one of the most epic and gigantic heads of hair. Let it ride all season until yesterday. For the One Love Foundation, yesterday, Paul Carcaterra. A lot of neglect for a long period of time went into growing this out. This started in March of last year. A couple of uh, cleanups, but we let it grow and we are about to chop it off. It had a good run, it had a great run. Yeah, it became almost like its own little entity. We figured, hey, let's cut it, let's raise some money for charity. And Clark and I got with the people at One Love. They've been tremendous. The proceeds go to help relationship abuse. So the locks, unfortunately, have to go. It's for a good cause. And uh, we're thankful that we can partner with the people at One Love. Look at this, you made me respectable. I can re-enter society. Yes, you can, you can. Look like a million bucks. Hey, and we raised a lot of money for a great cause. One Love, check it out. Joinonelove.org slash haircut if you want to donate. You went from the history professor at a liberal arts college to like a tech entrepreneur. We're working out in the valley out in California. What, listen, what a transformation. Listen, I know this has become such a sideshow, but I want to thank uh, a couple of people. One of the folks at One Love, Dana Boyle, who put us in touch with One Love, Cart for cutting the hair, but also the lacrosse community for your donations. Uh, this is a great cause. I know certainly with Virginia playing today, that is a cause near and dear to so many at UVA. So uh, for all this and all the chatter that came with it, I I'm glad we could turn it into something positive. Have a lot of fun while it's going. Now look at the before and after. That shot on the left is absolutely epic. And you can still donate. Just go to the website there at the bottom of your screen, joinonelove.org 
slash haircut. We have raised uh, about fifteen thousand dollars so far. And and Kark, uh, if you do want to start your own salon, there are there are clients, future clients, <laughs> peppered all throughout Rensselaer Field. Look, I've been cutting hair since fifth grade, and my mom, my late mom, Diane Carcaterra, who always would, would push me to follow passions and dreams, and I always loved to cut hair. She said one day I should open a salon called Paul David. David's my middle name. Who would John in front of you? John Paul David? Now nah, you've got the street kid. I like Carmine's Cuts. Carmine's Cuts. Cash Anisha's only. Was, well, that was a real tough job because it was a makeover. It wasn't just like your typical, okay, visit to the barber shop, same style. It was a makeover. I needed a weed whacker. You did good, buddy. You did good. Thank you. Here we go. Fairman rolls back. Nothing there. I love that timeout. There's Bernhardt. He scores again. Indomitable, invincible. A one-man wrecking crew this season. See the impact of the timeout that Coach Tiffany took, and it looked like things were going well. They had their legs, they were defending on the perimeter. But Bernhardt has done it once again. Off ball, he continues to move, he presents a target, and a strike is delivered. It's the little subtleties, Quinn. Everyone knows Bernhardt around the perimeter. He's lethal with the speed. But off ball, Soliday turns his head for a fraction of a second. Bye-bye. A 6-0 run by Virginia, now countered with a pair of Bernhardt goals to make it 8-6. Maryland's unbeaten for a reason. We're seeing that right now. Weirman is mucking it up at the face-off X. Maryland getting its wings involved. Big ground ball here. Weyer had it for Virginia. Geppert knocked it loose. It's kicked ahead. Puglisi vacuums for Maryland and drops it off for Bernhardt. Two goals, two assists. Running start. Loses Sawstead. There's a sense of impending due when Bernhardt's got a running start. Maltz. Really cranked it. Last team uh, to go undefeated, Virginia in 2006. Maryland looking to do the same. Brown on the doorstep, cashes in. Three straight for the Terps. Terp Nation's feeling it. We hear you. He's panicked. Griffin Brown has a lot of lacrosse experience. And it shows. Big time scorer from Colgate. Knows how to play away from the ball. Known as an outside shooter. But like Bernhardt, is crafty and nifty inside. Tiptoes the crease area. That was close. Super close as the second midfield continues to shine in the postseason. Great body control. That crease is a nine-foot radius. Offensive players are not allowed in. You're not allowed to step on the line either. Three goals in three minutes. That ball that count. count. That counts. What a That's play. good. What a play. The face-off game has changed in the second quarter. Maryland has won four of seven. And Weirman wins another one. Terps have Virginia playing a lot of defense. Weirman scored his first career goal earlier in this NCAA tournament. He's been a surprise for John Tillman. They expected Connor Calderon to be their backup, the guy who's appeared on uh, Team USA under 19. But Weirman, sophomore from Pennsylvania, originally committed to Fairfield. Andy Cope, when the head coach left, ends up at Maryland, and he's been athletic, able to adjust to the new rules. In 2017, John Garino came off the bench as the third face-off guy. 
and it provided a spark for Maryland in their championship run. He was the unsung hero. Merle, the big check, jars it loose. Up ahead, there's Connors, one goal already today. Looking for Cormier. to get it across midfield before that shot clock hits 60, and Makar does. Brett Makar, first team, all Big Ten, down there on defense with Nick Grill, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Bernhardt, the slam dunk, Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. And the timeout by John Tillman. 3.38 to go in this first half. Virginia used a 6-0 run to take an 8-4 lead. Maryland has responded with three straight to get to 8-7 in what has been a fun, exciting, closely contested national championship game. Now we have some special guests for you. At halftime today, Chris Cotter, who's standing beside you and towering over you. Yeah. <laughs> Anish, I got West Hartford, Connecticut's own Mike Golan Jr. here. We're essentially going to be the meat inside this championship game sandwich at halftime. Uh, Clark is going to join us. We're going to talk about the first half. We're going to talk about that historic women's championship game yesterday. Being this close to the field goal, man, you really get a sense of how physical that play is out there, don't you? It's been unbelievable that Virginia run dominated in between here as they set a physical tone on a Maryland team that came out swinging themselves before getting checked by a couple of penalties. It's been fast. It's been furious. We're yeah. just getting started. Yeah, it's a, been a game of runs in the first half. So Clark will join us at the half. We'll talk about it, guys. Until then, they'll back up to you in the booth. All right, appreciate it, fellas. 3.38 to go in this first half. They've got the hyper ice going on. Luke Weirman, you ever used one of those? Those things are amazing. I use them at hockey every year. Didn't have those back in the day, Anish. Tell you, Mar Maryland has really answered the bell after that Virginia run. They make a change at the faceoff, and that's led to more possessions. Bernhardt has become a big factor. Gebert in transition off the draw, finding Bernhardt. And then Wisnowskis. Usually we see Bernhardt to Wisnowskis the other way around. And then the second midfield coming through, Holden to Griffin Brown. This Maryland team has answered the bell all season long. One of their signatures has been goal scoring runs. They dominated play in the Big Ten, but there were moments where they, you know, they had deficits. The Big Ten final, they were down to John Hopkins 9 to 6. So they, they're battle tested. Maryland has had at least, at least a 5 0 run in every game this season. That's a separator. Park, you know when you can lean on an offense for that kind of explosiveness, it, it's almost as if they have a knockout punch. Had a chance to tie here with three and a half to go in the first half. Why not give it to Bernhardt? They'll get a running start. Sawstead spun around. Field level, it's almost unfair how fast he is. Sawstead is like an all-state Texas football player. You see how Bernhardt just spins him. Shot clock at three. Bernhardt shoots. Virginia ball. I liked what John Donowski told us before the semifinals, the Duke head coach, telling us that Duke recruited Jared Bernhardt and they recruited him off his football film. High school option quarterback, so used to that the dive, whether it's the give, the keep, or the pitch, the ability to read and react with your eyes in one place, the body control that comes with that. I think the greats in this sport, Ryan Boyle, Tommy Shriver, Doug Shanahan, 
option quarterback football prepares you so well for the demands of lacrosse. Clark, the guy that the coaches were comparing Bernhardt to was somebody you played with. One of the all-time greats, Casey Powell. Yeah, I mean, look, they move very similarly. I mean, you, you have to look at the way they glide, right? It looks effortless when they approach the defense, right? It's soft on their feet. They glide. They get to top side at ease. The difference between Powell and Bernhardt, Powell had a little more creativity in his game, but from a lethal dodging one-on-one -on -one standpoint, it's there, man. Bernhardt is ridiculous. He's an all-time great dodging attackman, hands down. Good save by McManey on the Laviano shot. Alex Smith across the midfield line. 39 in white. His dad, Demore Smith, the head of the NFL Players Association. Bernhardt just kicks a straight ball out of bounds. Gets inside, he's in the crease. It's back to Virginia, 129 to go in the half. Great defense by Sostad, the tall right. Closed the gap. Chopped down his top side, right? He was beat at first, but he worked so hard to get across the back of the goal mouth and get to that top side. Virginia wisely uses its final timeout with 111 to go in this half. Quint, you mentioned Jared Bernhardt's football prowess. He was set to play at Ferris State this fall before their season went away. An option quarterback, and as John Donowski told us, this is a football player playing lacrosse. Every D1 lacrosse coach in the country took a shot at Bernhardt. He got an offer for, from Navy to play option quarterback. The one he really wanted was Georgia Tech, but here he is at the University of Maryland, and you see how those skills correlate onto the lacrosse field. He's the, the last of the Bernhardt trio of brothers. His oldest, Jesse, a Team USA player and now defensive coordinator at Maryland. Jake is an assistant coach and a very good one at Vermont. The mom, Catherine, is here. They lost their dad, Jim, in the summer of 2019. Jimmy Bernhardt was my defensive coordinator in high school football way back when, before going on to, to coach at Hofstra Brown, UCF. Uh, he coached at Penn State with Bill O'Brien and then for the Houston Texans. And Jimmy Bernhardt was a big part of, of John Tillman's early years as a Maryland head coach. John Tillman Clark telling us that when Bernhardt arrived back in 2017, that was the year Maryland won the title. And they had Matt Rambo and Colin Heacock and Connor Kelly. And Tillman thought that even then, with those stars, Bernhardt deferred too much. And he has gotten away from that. And he might not be the rah-rah type of vocal alpha, but on the field, when he's had to be, he's become the alpha this year, and he's taken charge, and he's taken over games. Unequivocally. You see it in his eyes. You don't hear him. You see his body language, his passion, his compete level. I met him when he was in middle school. He's with his brothers Jake and Jesse down at a camp in Florida, and watching him play lacrosse, as a young teenager even, you just knew he was different. Different kind of an athlete, different kind of a compete level. Great matchup here. Nick Grill, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year against Connor Schellenberger, Virginia's best player in this NCAA tournament. Highest scoring freshman in the country. Number one recruit out of high school. Red shirted last year. Why? He and Lars Tiffany agreed on it, and Virginia felt it had so much depth they could afford to redshirt Schellenberger. Schellenberger to Cormier. He's from Canada. Great hands, great and tight quarters. Big body helps as well. You draw that up to perfection. Clock and game management, they drain the clock. Pick set for Schellenberger, Grill stays with him, but Cormier with the well-timed cut, he's being covered by a midfield defender. The Oakville Ox, just too big, Clark. This guy goes 6'3", 200 pounds. What a combination. Schellenberger, one in blue, Cormier, 24 in blue, and here is the frightening thing. Eligibility-wise, those two guys are freshmen. 
I said 200. By now, it's more like 240. Stop the feet. Now Bernhardt, 15 seconds. Charging toward the cage. Wisnowskis from his sweet spot. Ten seconds to go. Bernhardt will trigger. Someone's got to be ready to help. Bernhardt trying to get around Sostead. There's the slide. Fairman shoots. Shot blocked. And the first half of this national championship comes to an end. A high-scoring affair. Virginia with a 9-7 lead. Bernhardt, a couple of goals, a couple of assists. Schellenberger, two goals and an assist for Virginia. That was something else. That was a terrific, terrific half. We saw settled sets. We saw transition. It had a little bit of everything that makes this game so awesome. Virginia won it all in 2019, looking to keep the crown. Maryland, if they can rally in the second half, would cap a perfect season. Down to Paul. Coach, what were you talking to the official about? Oh, hey, hi, uh, what you, uh, what you have for breakfast? Uh, <laughs> great to see you again, Dave. You know, I used to coach at Brown. I was a New England guy, and it's good to be see the New England officials. You know, this Maryland defense has been so strong throughout the course of the year. You put nine on them, though, in the first half. How? Well, it started with a transition. We, 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 uh, it, it took a while to start to crack what they're doing defensively. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have the, the best young offense coordinator of the game, Sean Kerwin. And, he, he, you know, so our first couple goals were by P.P. LaSalle getting us to our transition game going. But from there, um, Sean was able to analyze what they're doing. They're doing, trying to do some two-pole. They're putting the shorts on, uh, on Peyton. And, um, and then Connor Schellenberger, just, he just does such a great job running the show, understanding what the defense is going to take away and what they're going to give us. How have you seen the face-off game change in that first half? Yeah, yeah, obviously Shockey, uh, we, 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 Petey was able to have a lot of success against Shockey, but then 52 came in, and he's really done a nice job. Now, granted, we had the two violations, so Petey had to be cautious. So we're, we're really excited to be back to the reset. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, fellas. Lars Tiffany's team with nine goals in the first half. Maryland gives up 10 a game. We'll come back with halftime, a star-studded crew. Kark, Cotter, and Mike Golick Jr. That's coming your way next. 9-7 Virginia on top. We are 30 minutes away from crowning a champion, something we could not do a season ago. Nate Schraub, Quinn Kessnick, Paul Carcatero with you, about ready for the start of quarter number three. Oftentimes, these championship games played on short rest don't live up to the billing, not today. Yeah, this one's had incredible tempo, frantic action. It's had a little bit of everything in terms of styles, and I think going forward, whichever team can dictate the style of play that is Maryland and half-field sets, Virginia up and down, scoring off a of face in transition, will ultimately win. Virginia had a big 6-0 run, but Maryland closing that first half strong. They got three straight before Virginia came through at the end. Maryland on offense first as we check in with Kark. You know, you see this offense from Maryland. Coach Tillman didn't really like the way they weren't moving the ball. They're known for a team to move the ball at hyper speed and Bernhardt obviously is their initiator, their lethal dodger. But the pieces of the puzzle, we saw it against Duke on Saturday. That ball was moving so quickly, so crisply. He wants to see that as part of their offense in the second half. And then defensively, getting back in transition. Too many opportunities for Virginia to hit from defense to offense. Luke Weirman's play, a big bonus for Virginia in that first half. He's won 7 of 12 faceoffs. Wisnowskis against Kyle Kologi. Logan Wisnowskis wins the matchup. It's 9-8. Every time you try to label Logan Wisnowskis a uh, feet set mid-range shooter from the left wing, he unveils a layer to his game. Able to run downhill, shield his stick, show his great size to get to Pater. What he does so well, Quint, 
how he uses his shoulders. That's how he gets separation. He doesn't have the quickest feet in the world. He's not a straight line, fast dodger. He uses his shoulders to lean, but also protect the stick and increase his angle. Yeah. We have a withholding call on Maryland to show for Junior Ball. That was the 20th faceoff. 11 for Virginia, 9 for Maryland. And Maryland is right in the vicinity of 50%. That bodes well for the Terps. Big discussion on the far sideline between the official and the Maryland coaching staff asking for some clarification. Standing neutral grip. The ball, you have to make a move on the ball, and the ball must be raked out. The word is immediately. How about the individual efforts by Doc Sakin? Where's Docs? Well, he's showing up in East Hartford. First half, he dissected the Maryland defense, felt the pressure in a slide, became a passer. This time around, no slide, it's pay dirt for Docs. If you watch the way he sets up his Docs here, quick left to right, losing his angle, and then goes back to the left, because by going back to the left, that gives him the better angle to beat McNaney. The most productive midfielder in Virginia lacrosse history, playing in his last game. That's game 77, a long ride. Four years away, he flirted with playing football at Villanova. He's back to finish it off, guiding the younger guys and making a, a huge play when it counts. Seven different goal scores now for UVA. Weirman and LaSala to battle again. Ground ball to Grayson Saladay. He picked up eight ground balls in the semifinal win, had a couple of balls to turnovers as well. When LaSala starts winning faceoffs out the front side, defensively, you have to send a winger in to crash and protect against the fast break, which leaves Virginia wingers able to run free, and they don't have a, an opponent on their hip. Aiken again, working on Joshua Kaufman. Matt Moore, out of Cormier, has the matchup on Matt Rahill. Cormier looking to dump it off. It comes back to Schellenberger. Good look here. Jeff Connor. A hat trick for Connor on the biggest stage. Quick, watch how fast Schellenberger picks this ball up and knows where the next man is. Cormier tries to shovel it inside the Labiano in one motion. Pick the ball up, hit the next man. Make the extra pass. This was a Virginia team early in the season playing hero ball on offense. They weren't sharing it. It was getting stagnant in sticks. And then something clicked in that win. A big win against Carolina. Hockey assists, making the extra look. The one more feed. Weirman and Saladay in a battle for it. Rolling to the sideline, Nick Grill, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Wisnowskis. A hat trick for Groot. Ball movement. Watch how quick the ball's in and out of sticks. 
That's what we saw against Duke on Saturday. Ball moves at hyperspeed and the versatility of Wisnowskis, who earlier created his own offense down the alley. And when it comes down to it, that's his sweet spot. That high lefty wing, he's automatic. Ten goals now in this NCAA tournament. Down. Another face-off won by Maryland. Here comes Puglisi. Puglisi cranks and scores. Goalie Alex Rhodes, a veteran. I thought the level change from Wisnowskis buckled him and handcuffed him. He didn't see this last shot as effectively as you'd like also. There's really no movement towards the ball. Alex Rhodes has played in a ton of lacrosse games and at an extremely high level. He's got to find himself right now. And he's got to organize this Virginia defense. His body language and posture is critical. He can't show signs of weakness right now. He just got to hit the reset button. They're daring Roman to shoot. Puglisi lives about an hour from College Park. Tight knit Italian family. Eats dinner on Sundays. Mom Stella's chicken parm, 2 p.m. Go for seconds. Laundry's done. Back to College Park. Marsala wins this out front. Driving through traffic. Gets hit. It's knocked loose. Maryland had it. And now a whistle. It belongs to the Terps and Maryland's bench popping up. Moss Pit. That group brings the juice every week. Both teams with seven different goal scores. Left side of your screen, watch LaSalle get triple teamed. Jacked up. Wisnowskis will move it around the perimeter. Fairman. Now it's DeMeo from X. The cutter not there. Fifth year senior from San Diego gives it up. Long to the wing. Wisnowskis again looking for his fourth. Stick checked away. Wisnowskis able to recover. Leading in front behind the back Maltz. Wanted to shoot. Wisnowskis again. Gets to his sweet spot. Shot blocked. Connors vacuums. Good ride. Virginia in some trouble. They've got to get it across, not much time. Dixon, that's failure to clear. And that's going to be a delay of game, at least it should be. That's what John Tillman is saying. What is John Tillman doing at 10 yards on the field? Oh, that should have been a delay of game. Dixon dumped it back. on the benches. Referees made the right call. But John Tillman is not the fourth official on this crew, and he's got to stay on the sideline. Road out of the cage. He gets back in. It's too late. Logan Wisnowskis with his fourth in a brand new ball game with 9-11 to go. the complimentary parts for Maryland. And in certain areas, they're elite. Logan Wisnowskis is an All-American. He's a lefty that can absolutely unload. 
in the variety of places he's doing it within the offensive set. This is the chameleon offense where everyone can play anywhere on this offense, Quinn. And ball movement under the direction of offensive coordinator Bob Benson creates all sorts of stress defensively. We've seen Wisnowskis normally on that left wing. He curls across the formation. All right, fellas, here we go, down. Good. Face-off violation on Maryland, Virginia ball. Virginia's got to find a second win. Still tons and tons of time. Still plenty of time and already a high-scoring third quarter. Six goals. Not even seven minutes in. Charlie Bertrand. All this guy does is win championships in his career. Player Mary Mack, he's playing in his fourth NCAA championship game. Three of those at the D2 level. One back-to-back -back titles in 2018 and 19. Xander Dixon, he's been an invert option for Virginia. Moore marked by Makar. Gets the pick from Dixon. Moore, skip pass to Garno. Firing the rocket! Peter Garno from Matt Moore. Virginia back on top. That's a strong answer for the second midfield unit. Garno, a high-level shooter with both hands. Man, he's got some velocity when he sets his feet. McNaney gets a piece. Not enough. Gives so much credit to Matt Moore. He's playing hurt. Every time he shoots or passes, you see that left shoulder dragging. He is gunning it out. Brilliant skip pass to lob that over the defense through sticks and put it on the money. Virginia at its best is when Matt Moore facilitates. Face-off violation on Virginia. It should be a two-quarterback system for Lars Tiffany and the offensive coordinator, Sean Kerwin. We've got Schellenberger, one in blue, and Matt Moore, five in blue. We started with a loaded championship weekend field. Go Top two seeds are out, Carolina and Duke. Left with Virginia and Maryland. 22 minutes and change, and perhaps more, from deciding the champion. Griffin Brown, saved by Road, using the body. He covers it up. His hands were toast. But the reflexes to use his body is right. I'll tell you what, gents, there's a lot going on in the sideline. Not just arguing calls with the officials, but the two coaching staffs actually getting into it with each other. In what way? Fighting and arguing over calls and, and who's right, who's wrong. And then, you know, you say something to the official, you spark the animosity. It's just there's tension down there. It's called smack talking. In a year, I thought that sportsmanship has never been finer across the landscape from teams and from coaches who are thankful to play. Schellenberger inside roll, beating Grill. 13 11 Virginia. Connor Schellenberger has blossomed from a talented freshman and a productive player into a full fledged superstar. Watch how he feels the pressure. This goal is defined by understanding where the slide comes from, using your shoulder, and hitting pay dirt. He gets grilled. Schellenberger has been magnificent. Being a Terp is no easy way is out, no cutting corners. Always outworking your opponent.
you kind of get remembered by the national championship teams here at UVA. We are a, a significant threat um, to win the national championship. Thirteen eleven Virginia. We take a look at the Capital One Cup standings update as teams compete for a combined four hundred thousand dollars scholarship from Capital One. Alabama on top with eighty two points. Virginia has won six national titles in its storied history. Four under Dom Sturgeon. Maryland has won three. The Terps have finished national runner-up eleven times. with four goals apiece in this third quarter. Lisi on Dixon. Let's get pass to Moore. Thought about it. Good defense by Maycar. Moore gets it off and scores! Virginia has now scored on 12 of its last 15 shots. Oh, this shot's almost unstoppable. 100%. Another shot by a Cavalier offensive player that stings the opposite side pipe of the left-hander, McNaney. McNaney leaning towards the middle. That ball is yanked to the near side post and just paints a corner. The goalie cam will show. Look at that accuracy. That's the hardest save for a goalie to make because it's so far away from the head of his stick. John Tillman, instant analysis off the iPad. And he's, he's looking at that iPad to figure out wh why there was no double team. There's Weirman, face-off win. Trail check by Saladay. And the road covers it up. He's got the outlet. Schellenberger. Got him doubled in the corner, sure, and Grill. What a pass. What a catch. That was a quarterback to a receiver on a long fade route. Sure, and Grill closed in on him. Doc's taking a goal and an assist. Virginia's largest lead was four. There's a man down. It's Laviano for Virginia, slow to get up. Schellenberger falling down. McNaney needed that save. Wow. And Laviano comes away with the rebound through the contact. The Virginia bench wants a flag. New shot clock. No, the shot clock did not reset. I thought McNaney made the stop. Yeah, it looked like he did. I think that's what the bench wants. They wanted a shot clock reset. They didn't get it. And now out of bounds, two on the shot clock. Well, Lars Tiffany really all of these officials asking for the reset. I thought in I real McKinney, action, I thought McKinney made a, a stop there. Let's see if we can get a better look. Car to Oliver. That's how you beat the ride. 3.30 to go in the third. Now Bernhardt. 
One goal away from tying the record for most goals in a single NCAA tournament. Wisnowski's back to Molliver from X. Freshman from Atlanta. Wisnowski's four goals today, looking for five. One-handed pass. Off target, retrieved by Bubba Fairman. Fairman changing direction. Shot bothered. Now Bernhardt from the wing is saved by Wade as he goes to his knees. Alex Road is as battle-tested as any goalie in the country. MVP of the championship game back in 2019. Caused a turnover by Maryland. Dixon coughed it up. Sure, plays it back. McManey now. Virginia responded with three straight. Cubs last led at 4 2. Mayo against Kologi. Impressive length by that Virginia defense. They force another turnover. Georgetown head coach Kevin Warren likened it to going to Jurassic Park. Velociraptors everywhere. The double team to perfection. The defender on ball does a great job of turning the man, stopping the Dodgers' at initial foray to the goal. And when that player turns away from the goal, no one's better in the nation with a double team than Virginia. A pinch double team get the turnover. Park, the help defense, the off-ball defense has come a long way. It's night and day. We had them in February against Syracuse up in the dome. They looked lost, confused. There were moments where they cleaned it up and then went back to that kind of disoriented defense, but they buckled down just like in 2019. When they won a national championship, down the stretch, they figured it out. They always had the pieces. You look at the individual players for Virginia. The length, the speed, it's about playing together. What you're doing away from the ball. Dixon would tend to shoot. That one hits the pipe. Or did it? The shot clock does not reset. 17 seconds to go. Oh, I thought that got a piece of the cage. Schellenberger, one second. Now Maryland ball, final 10 seconds. Quarter number three. Virginia 15 minutes away from remaining the champion. Maryland has had a 5-0 run in every game this season except today. The Terps will need a big run in that fourth quarter. 15 minutes left in regulation to decide a champion. This is the eighth NCAA tournament meeting between Maryland and Virginia. 2019 quarterfinals, Virginia rallied back from a five-goal fourth quarter deficit. Ryan Conrad with some late heroics, but this game remembered for this play. Shot off the post, you see the net ripple? They call this a goal, and well, it was knew, the game tying goal. You knew at the time that it wasn't, but it was on the scoreboard. And one of the reasons why Virginia was able to come back, they had eight comebacks in 2019. In overtime, Matt Moore off a great skip pass to the weak side of the defense on the championship weekend, the Cavs, the comeback Cavs in 19. One of the worst calls that we have seen in the NCAA tournament, and I was talking to Kyle Long yesterday. He said, hey, we remember that. It was hard 
to see Virginia celebrate a national championship. John Tillman has taken the high road. He has. He did then, he did this year when they were an undefeated three seed and had to go to Notre Dame. Maryland has been a great fourth quarter team I mean, this season. They've found an extra gear. They've shown tremendous heart. They've been able to execute when they've been tired. We saw it against Notre Dame, down three in the fourth quarter. Look at the differential, bottom of your screen. They're a terrific fourth quarter team. I thought Virginia limped to the finish line in the semifinal way. Virginia did not score in the fourth quarter against North Carolina. Maryland rallied from 12-9 down against Notre Dame in the quarters. But one big factor here, Virginia has had more tight turnarounds than Maryland this season, and Virginia trains for this. They lift Sunday. Connor Schellenberger, a man on a mission. Four goals, two assists. Another six-point game for the redshirt freshman. He's unbelievable. Unbelievable. He checks every single box. He plays in space. He hammers it from the outside. He rolls above goal line extended on the prior goal against Grill. So Grill's playing that a little bit behind, anticipating another roll. Schellenberger feels the back pressure, shoots in front that time. What Doc Shaken told us yesterday. Look at him as a senior, even though he's a redshirt freshman. He carries himself like a senior. We look to him for answers. He's had every answer in this postseason. The physical gifts, apparent, but the preparation, the film work. He keeps a notebook with detailed notes about defenders and skiers. This kid is all in. Hoffman emerges with the ball out of the Tempest. There's a great line about bullfighter one of Hemingway's books. He says he's so young and so talented. He knew everything when he started. I've never seen him do an awkward thing, and he won't until he gets scared. And the payoff to that is he never gets scared. Bernhardt. Yeah. Right, so the rebound the new 80 second shot clock. Snauskis has had the hot hand. today, and that was a good look for the mail. Playing loose, too, isn't he? Big number 12 from the far side, the lefty. Kyle Long one-handed, and this is going to be Virginia ball. Closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds. Merle trying to evade Fairman. We'll play it back to Kastner. Four goal lead matches Virginia's largest of the game. Here's Kastner all the way. Kicked away. Aiken. Still a long range of shots. Virginia sets. How about Kastner, huh? Upside on Kastner and these. <laughs> Stratosphere. I was going to say Galaxy. 6'7", he can run, great high school basketball player. Project 39. Tony Bennett has some interest in getting Kastner to play basketball. Bertrand offline, the backup by Schellenberger. Bertrand, 41, so strong, left-handed. Got that body, lean in on him. Schellenberger shaking grill. He's been the best player on the field today. Schellenberger has his man hung up. Aviano creating traffic in front. Schellenberger probing. Grill out to greet him. A shot. And it comes back to Schellenberger. And a new shot clock. If it's saved by the goalie, if it hits the pipe, or if it goes in, we get a shot clock reset. And now this Maryland defense has to dig deep down four.
Clark, you get the sense this might be the possession. You feel it. Both teams gassed, digging deep. The Sunday workouts for Virginia against the relentless approach of Turk Nation. Matt Moore with a good look and he scores! Virginia with its largest lead. It's 16-11. Extended possessions. Wearing down the defense with body punches. Road makes the stop with a one-handed shot. Looks like it glanced off his forehead. Virginia's ball and Matt Moore has been so good in terms of understanding the offense. Schellenberger gets the rebound. And it leads to this here. When Virginia clicks at another level, Matt Moore comes to the party. Look at their offensive production. When they explode, five in blue has such a big time effect on this offense. You mentioned the two quarterback system. John Tillman knows it. Schellenberger, Moore, too much. Matt Moore has had a decorated career, but it's been a bit of an up and down season. All up today, three goals, two assists. Cavs by five. Virginia looks to close. Maryland looks to come back. Park, let's start with Virginia. How do they close? That's the closer right there. Packs a nasty punch. He's only about 5'8". Tough as nails from Rocky Point, Long Island. A football player who's won the biggest face-offs in the last 15 years for the University of Virginia. It's been Petey LaSala. When you're up five, that's the guy you want at the dot to ice this game. If you're Maryland, it's about Jared Bernhardt, who's played his senior season with mental clarity. There are moments where John Tillman will just look at him and nod. Jared, now's one of those times. Bernhardt scoreless in the second half. Weirman wins the faceoff. And the ball in the cross of Jared Bernhardt. And Virginia with the backup and mistake by Maryland. Off the timeout, they win the faceoff, they give it right back to Virginia. Cavaliers today have shot lights out 16 out of 34. Maryland creating chaos in the middle of the field. Geppert's got it. Can the Terps run? They give it to Bernhardt. DeMeo's been so clutch in his career for Maryland. Bubba Fairman down the alley, lefty shot. Another one. And Virginia just quicker. That time it's Kologi. Anticipating runouts, the weak side defender at the goal line extended. Road had an empty net, thought about it. Somehow threads the pass. Moore couldn't handle it. It's knocked loose. McManey out of the cage. Got to give John Tillman and their staff credit for going to the 10-man ride, pulling the goalie and pressing early. We still, saw, still 10 minutes to go. We saw how much trouble Virginia had clearing in the fourth quarter against North Carolina. Bernhardt turbos to the cage. Griffin Brown now, part of that second to midfield. Led Colgate in scoring the last four years. Kyle Long, a factor early in this game. Looking for Wisnowskis. If he catches it, that's a goal. Instead, it's Virginia Ball. A little too much, much mustard. Let's see if Maryland rolls up field in the 10 man. They do. The goal is empty. So this is man to man pressure all over the field. Laviano's open. He comes back near the midfield line to make the catch. NCAA postseason coverage continues in Oklahoma City for the Women's College World Series. Match 
action begins Thursday at noon on ESPN. For more information on all the NCAA championships, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Boston College beat Syracuse in the women's final yesterday. Charlotte North capping the season for the ages. Virginia. It hasn't been a linear path to get to this point. If they win, we'll wonder how did they lose to Syracuse twice. They beat Carolina two times, including in the semis. Doc Sakins bouncer saved. Big ground ball. Virginia's been quicker to the 50-50 balls. They get another one. And a timeout by Lars Tiffany before the shot. Tiffany sensing the importance of possession and time. A new shot clock, 8-10 to play in regulation. This was a wicked bouncer. I do like the fact that Maryland is turning up the heat. They bring their 10-man ride to the table, gets him an extra possession. Long, just too much mustard, and Wisnowskis can't make the handle. Doc rings the bell. High bouncer kicking off this natural grass surface. Look at this. Ricochets off the post. Look at McNaney track that. You know, the Super Mo is unbelievable because it kind of breaks the game down into little microseconds, and you can see the reactions of a goaltender. Park, Virginia is shooting 16 out of 35 on Championship Monday. Do you remember the last time you've seen this kind of shooting performance? You look at Virginia's shooting today, I think it's just been incredible. When you look at McNaney, on the afternoon he has 10 saves, but he hasn't let any soft goals in. The precision of the Cavaliers in regards to them shooting at the pipes and stinging corners, it's been amazing. I was just in the huddle for Virginia and offensive coordinator Sean Kerwin just said, it's all about 80-second possessions. They're up by five right now. They're going to milk some clock. And they have the perimeter speed type athletes to do it with Doc Sakin and Jeff Connors and Connor Schellenberger. You see the chemistry that this Cavalier team has in a circle, hands on shoulders. I remember that first Thursday night game when lacrosse came back this spring. Who would have guessed that this team would still be leaning on one another? at crunch time. <laughs> a journey unlike any other, an accomplishment this year to get to championship weekend. More talent in the game this year than ever before. To win a title this year, it means something. It wasn't just X's and O's and game planning. Building chemistry when you're not together. Virtually. So many coaches said the cross was the only thing that was normal this spring. The Oasis. it up top. Matt Moore shot. That one hits Laviano. He's down. Are you fucking kidding me? He's behind the play. Seeing Laviano. He took Maryland that. upset. Yep. They stopped the play. He took it right in between the helmet and the bottom of his neck. Wow. 
heard of the Maryland bench saying it was behind the play, but that was awfully scary. Laviano to the sideline, Maryland ball, 7.02 to go. Remember, in that 2019 quarterfinal, it was Virginia down five in the fourth quarter, and the Cavaliers rally. Here's McNaney across the midfield line. He had a goal earlier this season. The road was in the cage. It was not going to happen there. Bernhardt time. Number one in white's got to be a factor on this possession. Bernhardt trying to get open. Kastner. On DeMeo. Kastner all over DeMeo. The help from Connors. Wisnowskis. Top shelf and a flag. Five for Logan Wisnowskis. Quint, you can't paint it better. Look at the shot, man. DeMeo was flirting with disaster. Dancing in a double team. He's cornered. He's down on the turf. Somehow eludes. And then liquid smoke to the top shelf as a flag flies. The door is open for the Turks. And the penalty on Virginia. So Maryland will go man up. First penalty on Virginia today. And now the Turks with an advantage facing off six on five, three on two with the faceoffs. Faceoffs almost even. And Lasalo wins it for Virginia. He retreats. Aaron pass. Bernhardt's got it. Beating inside. Tomates. The pendulum swings. It's the one more. Lars Tiffany feels a tough run. A lot like Schellenberger earlier. Ground ball immediately into a pass. Jared Bernhardt senses some disarray. Peter LaSalle tries to get the ball back to his defensive zone. It's a quick scoop. Hits the crease mat. Danny Moss catches in. A simple exchange proves costly. Lasala and Weirman. Lasala lost his stick. Big ground ball. Lasala pops it into the air. Able to get it back. Now trapped near the sideline. Out of bounds, Maryland ball. And an avalanche of momentum behind the Terps. Less than six minutes to go. It's a three goal game. Over the freshman to Fairman! And the Terps close to two. The lack of a timeout. Hurting Virginia right now. They used it to save a possession earlier. But the momentum has swung and they're down to one stoppage. You see that under Virginia. They only have one timeout left. The second midfield line has played super lacrosse in the playoffs. Poor defensive communication, Carter. And Malibur is 
the future quarterback of the Terps. He's on the second midfield, but they want him behind because that's where he's lived his entire life. Trained by the great John Zilberti, Syracuse legend in Atlanta. So skilled, so fundamental, and finds the KG vet, Fairman. Faceoffs 18 15 in favor of Virginia. It doesn't tell the whole story. Some of these recent faceoffs, Virginia's won. Maryland has been able to gain possession afterwards. Weirman's got it. Big hit by Scher, 17 from the wing. The Turk bench is on fire. Foot on the gas for Maryland. They scored three goals in a minute. We told you, they have had that big run in every game. A run of at least five straight goals. Not today. In the midst of a 3-0 run. Molliver against Saladay. John Tillman, a lot of trust in the freshman from Atlanta. Number four in white, Eric Molliver. Fairman plays it to the wing. And this is wide. Defense gets tired. The splits get narrowed. Virginia trying to pack it in. Maryland's ball movement will yield some mid-range shots. Long a gifted passer. Road out of the cage. Bernhardt makes the catch. He goes down. It comes back to Long. Looking for Fairman. He can't hold on. Well, they're able to get it back. Less than 20 to shoot. DeMeo down the alley. Back shot and a score. Four straight by the Terps. And this is turning into a classic. It's Tony time. Wing play on the faceoff. LaSala thinks he's in a good spot. He gets laid out. Turnover created by Schur, 17 and white. Look at this move. Anthony DeMeo feels the Virginia defense closing the top side middle of the field, so he dips it underneath. And a lot like that Notre Dame winner. Similar location on the field. He's so smooth, so crafty, with little room to operate. Players got the grounder for Virginia. Can the Cavaliers clear and get an offensive possession? They had trouble in the fourth quarter against UNC. Peel goes down, flag goes up. Sawstead's got it for UVA, plays it to the wing, a shot, and a score! The fourth goal for Matt Moore. A little room to breathe for Virginia. This is something else. This is awesome. Ben Weyer's ground ball, running through traffic, securing the ball, and then finding an outlet. Flags down. It's a play on. Kate Sawstead comes up with it, and Tixie's hit. Look at the chaos that ensues. Chaos reigns supreme for the Cavaliers. That was the word that we knew would have to be so profound that they would jump and celebrate and make another run at a national championship. Lay down. Set. Osawa hounded by Weirman. And he gets it back to Rhode. Three and a half left. Ten-man ride by Maryland. Goalie out of the cage. Laviano over to Saladay. Jeff Connor, what a game he's had today. Three goals and an assist. And a top five recruit. Has had some big games. Had four against North Carolina earlier this year. Maryland's got some decisions to make here defensively. Do they stay at home and play it straight up? Do they extend in pressure? And if so, when? Shot clock, game clock, score. Park, given what you've seen from Maryland at the faceoff X today, 
I think you can play this straight up, can't you? I think so, too. And you have to look at the last few weeks. Weirman has been clutch in big moments. Won the biggest face-off of the season on the road against Notre Dame. You play straight up. You put him into a late possession scenario. Doc's Aiken, the fourth quarter. Doc's time, according to Lars Tiffany. Aiken turned away. Left hand, save McNaney. Rebound to Makar. He goes down. Maryland is going man up. Smith is down, no flag. Still just the one on the field. So a man up opportunity coming for Maryland. Less than two minutes to go in regulation. Terps got to get it across the midfield line if they are to clear. They just do. Goffman is staring to that sideline. It's a freebie here for Bernhardt with the flag down. Bernhardt accelerates. Top side. An extra man opportunity for Maryland. Down two. 96 seconds to go in regulation. McNaney, top of his arc, actually he's out of the crease, resets at the last second, takes that one off the chest. Hey, you're gonna release two minutes. Here's the foul. Maycar so strong. Taken down with a hold with possession. Six on five for the next 30 seconds. Griffin Brown plays it to Fairman. 120 to go. Maltz. Back up to Wisnowskis. 11 seconds left on the man up. Wisnowskis is Virginia. It's back to even strength. Fairman shot blocked. Kaloji paid the price. Maryland still has it. Less than a minute to go. Terps down two. Wisnowski's his shot blocked. It'll be Maryland ball. 42 seconds to go. And Lars Tiffany ran all the way out to the restraining area on the other side of the field to get the timeout call. And this has been one of the most fun national championship games we've seen. For Lars Tiffany, a late stand starts with defenders who are willing to pay the price. Look at him sell out on the perimeter to impact a shot. I mean, the courage, we've seen it from Virginia back in 2019 and today. Their approach is to get to the hands of shooters at the last second to give their goalie any kind of advantage or throw the shot off the mark. Their closeouts, their physicality, their length, their reach. Virginia goes over the defensive game plan Maryland Quint needs two goals in 42 seconds. Well, Jared Bernhardt's been your guy all season. Be shocked if he doesn't win the Tuareton Trophy. He's got five points. He's been an instant double team creator all season long. You think that Bob Benson, their offensive coordinator, would have the ball on his stick? He'll draw the he'll draw the double. Now, if you're Virginia, are you going to play zone here? Are you going to play man? They have a zone. Kirk. It's in the huddle, and Bobby Benson, the offensive coordinator, he knows that Virginia might throw a zone at them. If they go man, look for Bernhardt to start with the ball, and they'll set a pick in terms of getting him that long dodge where he's been so successful throughout the course of the year and his career. But if they're in the zone, Wisnowskis will be a key factor in terms of getting some pressure on this Virginia defense. He's been incredible spraying it from downtown. Bernhardt. 
for dominant right-handed player. One thing we haven't seen from him today is a left-handed drive up the left side for that turn away, fade away jump shot right-handed. I think it's there if he wants it. Here's Bernhardt, there's the pick. Bernhardt, left hand, road, the save! Now Virginia's got a clear. They'll fire one downfield on Cage, whose ball? It'll belong to Maryland, 26 seconds to go. McNaney to Puglisi, less than 20 seconds. Molliver has long. DeMeo steps in and scores! They're not dead yet! Tony time! Tay, there's no quit in this group. A masterful, absolutely masterful clear by Maryland. They don't waste any, any time. Diagonal passes up the field. They continue to share it and not panic. Bernhardt is on the wing of the faceoff and a timeout by John Tillman. So before the timeout, Jared Bernhardt and Kyle Long, two short sticks on the faceoff wings. Maryland will need offense off the faceoff. goals today it ties the highest scoring NCAA championship game ever 1975 was a good year for Maryland Frank Urso and the Terps won a title that season there was a long drought after that until 2017 Maryland broke through beating Ohio State in the final Virginia looking to keep the title in Charlottesville. Not quite back to back. We didn't have a champion last year, but last repeat champion, Duke, 2013-2014. Park. Down in the huddle and John Tillman and staff preparing for this face-off. Jared Bernhardt will be on a wing. Kyle Long will be on a wing. All offense. Petey LaSalle, though, if you watch him, He's really comfortable in terms of putting it out in front. In this case, you would like to have a face-off guy, though, that could also kick it back in their defensive zone and burn some more clock. So they have both scenarios in terms of how they're crashing the wings with LaSalla in front and behind. Grayson Saladay on the near side wing for Virginia. Jared Connors and Jared Bernhardt. The presumptive Tawarton winner and the midfielder of the year at the top of your screen. Weirman punches it ahead, a chance for Maryland. Weirman all the way, shoots, save, road! Virginia's got it! The King's name remains a tower of strength. The crown stays with Virginia. games ever played and one of the greatest endings on championship Monday. Luke Weirman still down on the turf heroically pushing that face off forward. But Alex Rode 
with the body stop. And this one ran out of time. Could have played this one all day, and he, I think it would have been a one goal margin. A galaxy of stars on this field. Players for an age, a game for all time, Kirk. Unbelievable. Thank you, lacrosse for giving us 2021. Coach Tiffany, that was amazing. You won a national title in 2019 behind Alex Road. He did it again. What does he mean to this team? Yeah, I mean, Alex Road is, uh, he is a fantastic goalie every day. The rest of the country just gets to see it in, uh, mostly in April and May. He's a, uh, he steps up big. Now, you know, it's funny, I just hugged him. He's like, we won a national championship and I sucked. I was like, no, no, you were solid. He wants to make, 15 to 20 saves a game, and he thinks he should make more saves. But that's too, they're too talented. I'm like, Marilyn, they just bring so much good heat. Um, I just, uh, what an incredible job by Matt Moore stepping up here today. You know, Connor Schellenberger is showing he can dictate an offense and run an offense from behind the goal, sweep up top. You know, the amount of offense we scored today. It's Coach Kerwin. He's an, he's an incredible offense coordinator. Well, let's talk about that offense, because Maryland was holding teams under 10 goals per game, and you scored 17. What specifically did you see on tape that you thought you could capitalize? Um, well, again, we were surprised about how physical they were early. And so our first couple goals were off the PD transition. And, um, and so we like, we got to get longer dodges. We got to get outside the box and get some running starts before they get their hands on us, because they're so strong in this short 60 minutes. And then, um, and just with our invert dodging, see if we could get a little more space before, because we were, you know, we're kind of used to maybe just a quick little move and get our hands free, and that wasn't working today. So Sean Cohen got him expanded, and then took advantage of where their short sticks were with cutters by Peyton Cormier, um, and then obviously Schellenberger and Matt Moore, you know, our two guys. And we know how good McCarr and Grill are, but uh, they stepped up huge today. I saw you pregame during the anthem. You had a tear in your eye. Winning a national championship is one thing. Winning another national championship on Memorial Day. Describe those emotions. Yeah, it, it, they really are, because as I talked about the other day, that lacrosse is an incredible preparation for life, and we learned that from the Native Americans. I learned that from the Onondaga people. And, um, you know, it, it, and, and here we are on Memorial Day, the Native Americans learned it to be hunters, to be better men, but also warriors. And here we are celebrating the warriors who didn't come home, right? And, and it's just, it's amazing that the courage of all those people who did that for us. So we can talk about lacrosse games and have this fantastic 17 to 16 game. And I'm just, it's just, you know, it, I'm just moved by that. It, it's incredible, like, how fortunate we are to have our armed services and all the men and women who protect us. National champions again. Congratulations. Paul. Oh, thank you, Paul. Quint, Virginia's postseason began after a three-week layoff. They finished the regular season at three weeks until their first NCAA tournament game. Trailed in the fourth quarter against Bryant. Came back to win. Blew out Georgetown. Survived North Carolina. And they survived Maryland. This is how it ended. Maryland needing the goal to tie. Virginia's defense stayed at home. Weirman, who was spectacular in the second half, Takes that shot from about seven yards. And Rhodes, Rhode, Alex Rhodes makes the body stop. Two-time NCAA champion. He's got two rings now. Just holds his ground and makes a late reaction. And Virginia cleans it up. You think of the great goalies to come through Virginia. Kip Turner, who's on staff. Adam Gittleman. Tillman Johnson. All of them won championships. Alex Rode has won two. Yeah, Rodney Ruhlman, Peter Sheen came close. Undefeated season no more. Uh, an incredible year for Maryland. Kings of the Big Ten. Who took every punch in this tournament. They went out to Notre Dame. Made no complaints. Got it done. Superb win in the semis. They just run out of time today. They got the look. Luke Weirman. Had the shot. We've seen the joy. We've seen the emotion this year. Let's go, Cody. There's been no year like this, Anish, for these young athletes. And for every team 
to get through this season. Those lessons, the discipline, the sacrifice, dealing with isolation, trying to form relationships. If you made it through this season, you're set for life. Our Capital One player of the game, Connor Schellenberger. He was magical in this NCAA tournament. He had a super regular season, took it to another level when the games mattered more. He was the best freshman in the country, redshirt freshman and all, top scoring freshman in Division One, And in the postseason, Quint, he was the best player on the field in every game. Lars Tiffany always talks about the race to improve. And I look at the play of Connor Schellenberger in the playoffs as a supremely talented young man who continued to take positive steps to evolve his game and to go from being a really great player to being a game dominator. So the championship trophy will stay in Charlottesville. Heartbreak for Maryland under John Tillman. This is the fifth Memorial Day loss. They've been in this championship game six times and one final measure of sportsmanship. Well, the ability to shake hands. It's been a rarity this year. It's just the first real handshake we've seen all season to close it out. There's been a lot of gratitude for this season, having a season, having championship weekend. And after not having any of this last year, what a game, Quint, to cap the season. An amazing year, Jared Bernhardt and the Terps just ran out of time here in Connecticut. Our final score from Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Virginia 17, Maryland 16, the Cavaliers. National champions in 2021, and just like they were in 2019. It came down to the final shots. We'll be talking about this one for a long time. A season unlike any other, and a conclusion for the ages. Virginia still reigns in college lacrosse. Highly questionable is next.